How's David Pine today? Oh, he's doing good. Thank Man, you. I'm so glad to get you in here. Well, I'm happy to be here. In honor of us both being Texas guys, I'm going to have a Ziegenbach. That sounds good. Which you can't, but I'm going to drink one for you. Well, so. my wife does that daily. Beautiful stuff. It's good. Good flavor. I like it. So, uh, it, I want to, I'm going to kind of walk us into how you wound up here. Uh, you and I had never met before, but every time I am on Facebook, I would see somebody share a photo taken by David Pine. Well, I appreciate that. And, it, and they're all, I've never seen a bad one. I've never seen, I mean, and I, could, I look at that and I would go, man, this guy is squared away. He knows what he's doing. I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm a photographer, but I'm a hack, you know, and I'm, I'm watching and, and uh, as it got more and more frequent and I, and I, over the years, he had more and more friends, more and more connections. They kept coming up. So finally, I just threw you a friend request and saw everything. Your stuff's amazing. And then uh, we're connected through a lot of people and I really got into your work and uh, you're doing some video now and you, uh, you published a video that's particularly meaningful to me and I was like, that's it. You're going to the top of the list. Let's get you in here. So I really appreciate you coming in and uh, let's just, let's kind of do a bio. How'd you wind up? How'd you wind up here? Well, I, re I was the president of a communications company, and I retired 20 years ago. Wow. And I've always been so busy all my life that I just didn't cotton to uh, retirement so well, and I had to do something. I have a neck injury, so I can't play golf, and that my, was my other love. So um, I had fallen in love with still photography, when I was a GI in Vietnam, and uh, so I went back, I bought, went and bought a DSLR, and I just fell in love immediately, because for the first time, I couldn't take just 24 or 36 pictures, I could take a thousand pictures because of the digital era, and uh, I learned, I, sh I shot on an average of I would say 10,000 photos a month. And, uh, you know, a suggestion I would give to anyone learning digital photography of any kind is first learning the language. Because when you understand the language, then you understand what it is that you're doing, and you can anybody can make a sharp image focused properly. Did you did you start with thirty five when you were in the service? Yes, I started with a Petri two point eight. Oh wow! Uh, and it was it was it was fun. It I got hooked, you yeah. know. But uh, as a GI, I didn't do a lot of drinking. So special services had, uh, I guess, an arrangement for all the young GIs that they could go to special services offices. And they had a uh, dark room, and they would let you process your film, black and white. Oh wow! And uh, for free, and I thought that was tremendously cool because I would just, you know, I couldn't do color. We didn't have the ability to do color, but I did a lot of black and white, and uh, it was a lot of fun. It was, you know, I did a lot of it. Were you, and you were in the Air Force? Yes, I was right? seven years. What did you, you do in the Air Force? What did I do? I was, uh, I was a loadmaster for special air missions out of headquarters PACAF in Hawaii. And uh, I traveled from there all over the world. I was actually on Project Mercury. All right. Going around the, the Pacific, Australia, New Zealand, and Tahiti and Fiji, setting up antennas to see John Glenn. Cool fly around or orbit the earth now your load master days was that a single aircraft or single type or did you no no several? i had multiple because i i did hauled anything i could okay. i've hauled uh, cattle i've hauled bullpup missiles i've handled just about everything people well the paratroopers bullpup yeah. huh? i remember the bullpup we we talked about those in one of our episodes about all the nukes around yeah. here that's fascinating so you know i had to it was interesting. It was a lot of fun. I got to do a lot of traveling. 
And for a young man to travel the world like that was a tremendous experience. So when I see people today and they talk about, say, socialism or something like that, I've seen it. Mm -hmm. I know what it is. I know what communism is. I know what someone being a totalitarian is. I know what freedom is. And uh, I'm glad to have that in our country. It, yeah, we, we talk a lot about that on this channel. And uh, what I've followed, of course, you know, my, my parents are, are Vietnam. My dad's a Vietnam vet. And uh, my mom was in uh, support organizations wow. for, you know, for, the, for the Vietnam soldiers so that's you know i came up after that but what's really been interesting is in the youtube era uh the guys who are my age who grew up in in communist nations yeah that live here now or maybe still live in in russia or some of the different uh, countries that kind of compare how our lives were growing up they're really from one different. to the other yeah it's different they're... what uh and so when you're doing when you're when you're doing your work your photography when you're in the service what 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 did you photograph? What kind of stuff were you interested well, in? Well, once in Hong Kong, uh, I hired a sand pan and went out at sunlight or sunset for no reason other than I somehow my intuition told me that would be a neat thing to do with all the mountains that they have there and the sun setting between the mountains and all the sand pans in the harbor. And uh, that really kind of hooked me. Yeah, you know that uh, that did it. And yeah, the golden uh, hour stuff. Oh uh, yeah, it yeah. was it was just incredible, you know. And it just it set a place in my heart that was pleasant. Yeah, that was uh, made it special. I like photography, still photography in particular, because it allows me to capture a split moment in time that no one really has seen i can catch one eight thousandth of a second and if you can imagine how fast that is that's fast you know our bird at one four thousandth of a second or a jet plane at one two thousandth of a second or even something you know as long as 30 seconds you know it's, it's just all magnificent that you can actually you own that moment in time and uh, no one else captured it you captured it and it's it's an ownership. Yeah, that my uh, I've done a lot of astrophotography. I've yeah. observed. Well, you know what I mean. And it's it's fascinating when when you're sitting here going through, you know, sometimes hours worth of exposures. You think about how many ancient. Now I have a move shoot move. Yeah, how, how many ancient uh, images you've you've captured and how old that is oh, and every right. you know it's it's to realize if you see light. From a, from a star, from yeah. a galaxy, that you're looking at something that could be two billion years getting to you. Yeah, it could, it could technically not be there. Right, it, <laughs> today. Yeah. Yeah, so it's, uh, you know, it's, it's, that fascinates me. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's kind of in the minds of, of everybody and stuff like this, that, that kind of wonderment. Well, it's shooting the moon and realizing that the Earth is what's moving. Yep. so fast you know and how fast we're moving and where we're going and how fast we're rotating and how fast we're moving through space my god you know to think that you can shoot you have to shoot at say one two hundredth of a second or one two fiftieth of a second mm -hmm. in order to capture a sharp moon mm -hmm. because the earth is moving yeah and uh People go, wow! You got to really have fast shutter speed. Yeah, you don't slow yeah. it up. Yeah, you want to you want to still image it, a solid image of it, yeah. and then you know it's hard to track with some telescopes because it's not the moon's moving, the Earth's moving. They're not on the same. That's correct. They're not the same on the path. Same plane. So you know, I tell you, the the computer in my observatory doesn't like that. It'll you can stabilize on the moon enough to look at it and move away and let the next person look at it but yeah. if you try to take a picture you can you tell they're all different yeah they're on they're on totally That's different fun. isn't that cool but your <laughs> naked eye for closer objects are really better than a camera mm -hmm. uh, and the camera can't capture what uh, the naked eye can capture but it can sure get you closer <laughs> yeah yeah it can that's one of the one of the hobbies that are I guess avenues of astronomy that I wish uh, I had the skill for 
is uh, sketching. Is what? It's sketching. Oh, yeah. Because what you see, in, in no matter how, I've, I've looked through uh, the uh, 36 inch and the 110 inch and uh, the big uh, discovery scopes they have at McDonald Observatory, you know, through the, the eyepieces. Oh, yeah. Mine's a 12 inch. Uh, wow. And going all the way down to, you know, 100 millimeter refractors and binoculars, even on those, you're not seeing those big colorful, and you know this, you oh, know, no, you're, you're no, not no. seeing the you're big saying the fog. multi-layered because, you know, we actually have to build those images and stack them, and you're seeing black and white, and we call them faint fuzzies, yeah. and these people will take uh, black paper and sketch on it in a white pencil and sketch what they see. Oh, that's wild. And, oh, it's it's amazing, and I, I just, I've, I've had to sketch one of the, a couple of classes I've taken, we had to sketch uh, what we were seeing to prove we did it and how we tracked it. And my stuff is like stick figures compared oh, I, to what. I love to go to Fort Davis and shoot the stars. Uh, I go up to McDonald's Observatory, and really I go, I come back down the mountain to the first uh, pull off mm-hmm. and uh, set up there because no one. Yeah. No one's there. There are no lights that will interfere with uh, what I'm doing. And uh, Actually, I taught uh, um, one of my grandsons and stepson to shoot there. I, I set them both up with tripods and set them up with cameras and told them, well, you shoot this for 15 seconds and point it in that direction and shoot with your lens wide open. And uh, just sit back and relax. Yeah, yeah. You know, and uh, they, f- it was fun watching them do it because they they would go. I heard, wow, wow. You know, it's amazing what you can do if you'll put your camera on a tripod and you open up the shutter in a dark area for a long time. You know, oh, yeah. what you can do. It's or just a uh, just a cheap uh, like telescope equatorial, just a battery powered clock drive. Yeah. And sort of get it halfway, kind of sort of aligned, you know, pointed at the North Star and then yeah. just drag yeah. for a minute. And yeah, that's how I use the move, shoot, move. Yeah. And it just keeps track so you don't have star trails on everything. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, you know, you've got to, it's funny to think that you've got to adjust for the Earth's movement. Yep. That you're, this that's big the, ball is moving pretty fast. It's moving <laughs> under your feet. Yeah. So, it, it's, it's fascinating. And the, the, one of the things about astronomy that I dig is is what you see when you spend so much time looking up at night. Oh yeah, you don't you don't really uh, you just don't get a feel until you do that. You don't get a feel for what's going on up there, with the satellites, and how many shooting stars, and how many uh, just events, how many things take place. Oh up there. yeah, it's great. I mean, it's the uh, the Earth and being here. This time and space, I mean, we're, we're privileged beyond belief because we've got the stars up there and we've got animals and floral and fauna down here. Yep. And, uh, you know, uh, I just love all of it. You know, I love my lions and tigers and mandrel monkeys or apes and uh, cougars, pumas. You know, leopards. I would like to talk about that. Uh, that was the first thing that really uh, kind of turned my head. I, I don't say turned my head, but it was just it was just a super interesting part of your photography. And I lost the page now. You have a lot of the big cats. Tell me how you how you pull that off. Well, you just sit and watch. Where where are you doing this? Well, I'm doing that, and I've done it in the Bronx Zoo and. In New York, uh, the San Diego Zoo, the Dallas Zoo, the Fort Worth Zoo, the Houston Zoo, the San Antonio Zoo, uh, the Waco Zoo, the Abilene Zoo. And, uh, you know, I watch, I like to watch animals. They'll give you an expression if you'll give them enough time. Sometimes they're sleeping, just leave them sleep. You come back to them later and they'll be doing something. Uh, I've caught... uh, some gorillas that were just it took me a couple of trips to get a decent image uh, i caught a mama gorilla holding her baby you know and i caught uh, 
a chimpanzee baby with its mother and mother checking its foot for a stone or something or a bruise and it, the tenderness was incredible you know uh, animals will eat you if they get a chance but they're incredibly beautiful to watch i've uh it, i'm sorry i had to, it took me a minute to pull these up I, what, what uh i have to look at one to kind of explain it when you when you see your photos <clears throat> i saw you know, i would see a series of them come up of the animals and only because in a row obviously in the same trip or the same batch of photos there's a fox there's a mountain lion there's a tiger yeah and i'm going okay so this guy's at a zoo but when i look at the photos it doesn't look like it you frame them so well uh or you have you've you've used your depth of field so well that uh, it's there's nothing taken away from that image that says I'm I'm sitting in a zoo. It's yeah. it's amazing. I don't want you sitting in a yeah. zoo. That's the idea is to take the picture. Mostly I'm shooting uh, a 200 to 500 uh, DSLR, and when I do that, I usually have uh, a wide open look. Mm -hmm. Because uh, as low as wide open as that camera will go is only five point six of uh, that lens. Uh, I have a, a three hundred millimeter that's two point eight, and I mostly shoot at two point eight, which oh, okay, so which you, yeah, which at that distance gives you a sharp image, but then I shoot it large enough that I don't show the surrounding. Got it. Uh, I don't like, if you look at my flowers too, uh, I don't really show a small flower. My flowers are large, uh, large exposure. I crowd, I crowd the frame with everything that I shoot. Now, that's considered sometimes a no-no, but I don't have any no-nos because I don't work for anybody. So I shoot them the way I want to. You know, that is, that is something that in, in the artistry that I have some kind of a grip on, like music and, and photography, uh, th there are rules that make things generally interesting, you know, rule of thirds or, you know, things like that. But sometimes it just doesn't, it I doesn't just, work. And not me. Yeah. I, I showed, uh, I wound up at an airport with a lady who was a, a pro photographer and we were just talking and I showed her a, picture that a friend of mine had taken when she says, oh yeah I can already tell you there's a lot wrong with that and yeah. and I said but that was shot for a commercial application to fit around the logo yeah so it's perfect yeah you know yeah. and if that's what you wanted out of it or you want to show somebody else yeah yeah you, you're exactly there well when I started uh, first started shooting models in Austin uh of course, I was just mesmerized by mm -hmm. models getting into it. You yeah, know, models are people who like to be photographed, and let me tell you, <laughs> most of us, I don't. I hate to be photographed. Yeah, I don't like it. Uh, most photographers don't like to be photographed, but models just fall in love with the camera. They actually speak to the camera. They don't see you as a person or a photographer. They, they're looking to the lens. Or they're, you know, doing the different poses for the lens. They know what they're doing. Sir. And they're fun to shoot. But I crowd the image even with them. Uh, I have been criticized for crowding the image. But I don't really care. Yeah. Because I'm shooting for what I like and not what other people like. I, I've tried it their way I, to show someone toe to the top of their head from the toes to the top of their head isn't appealing to me. What's appealing to me about, uh, say, a model or any person, really, are their eyes. Mm -hmm. I don't really care about anything else. If they can, you know, their eyes have to be a predominant in the image or I'm not happy. Uh and uh, that's just the way I feel about it. I'm shooting for me. I don't have to shoot 
for anybody else but me. I don't hire out anymore. Uh, so I don't have to. I, I, I shot a, a lot of real estate and a lot of architecture. Uh, I've got some beautiful shots of the Odessa Pump Building that I shot for an architect. And, you know, that was fun. I like shooting architecture. I like shooting real estate. I like shooting houses. They're fun. It's, uh, you know, lighting is difficult. Uh, it's challenging, but it's fun. And uh, But I don't do that anymore because, of course, you know, last August I had two strokes. Right, right. So I can't, for me to walk around a property now and uh, carry a tripod uh, is pretty difficult. Uh, and, you know, I don't have to, so, you know, it's not a not a big problem. But I did enjoy it. You know, I did like it. I, uh, I recently taught a fella in San Antonio how to, how to get by shooting real estate, you know, and what he should do and what he should not do. And for people that don't know, that, that was what you retired from was real estate. Yes. Is that right? Yeah. 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 And, yeah, you're, you're – I, I, it's it's amazing. I'm I'm trying to ha- hold this conversation and look at your work at the same time. Uh, yeah, different, isn't it? it? It is. It's it's well, and and I understand being being a photographer myself. You you don't publish the the stuff you're not happy with. But I'm looking at, at the series of uh, your fireworks. Oh yeah, I love that. Oh my god, that's amazing. I loved it. Yeah. And I'm sorry, we're not going to have it this year. It's been canceled. Yeah, yeah. That's uh, if uh, I'm hoping if my health holds out, if I'm feeling well enough, uh, and all the logis- logistics get made, um, I'm hoping to be on our sailboat at uh, Oak Creek. Oh, wow. because all of the people yeah, around there fire fireworks shoot fireworks. So my wife and I have. Uh, we're going to go out and throw out the anchor and wow. turn the lights and hopefully watch the wow. floor. We did it from a uh, canoe wow. year before last. Well, that's fun. So, yeah, it was a, that was fantastic. That's, you know, I, I shoot something like those fireworks. I giggle. Yeah. You know, I, I look, I, I'm one of these uh, photographers that I uh, uh, look at my images after I shoot them. A lot of photographers say, I don't do that. Well, I do. Because I want to know what I'm doing. Yeah. You know, there's just, th- that's something in artistry. There's an insecurity and an arrogance that people get. And I don't, I, I've had people come up to me after gigs and tell me how to play things. And I should yeah. go to a five string bass and I should do yeah. this or that or whatever. Yeah. And uh, man, I'm, I'm here to do my thing and not yours. Uh, one of them that knocked my socks off, uh, your aircraft oh, yeah. photos. They're fun. I've got to some of the Thunderbird. Thunderbirds when they were here in Midland, that they're inverted tail to tail. Yeah, and that's people don't realize that is a rare image. That is not a common shot. And I've got two passing inverted, and it's uh, I actually like uh, the B twenty nines or B uh, B twenty fours that I have in pass and review type. Yeah image yeah. i like the uh the warthog i've got a picture in there of a warthog i was just looking that's my favorite aircraft shooting, in the entire world yeah well i'm shooting through the uh struts on it and i've got uh, some vintage planes on the other side of it that i caught and uh, that was not a plan shoot of course you don't plan shoot any of those but I just, I just, you know, like I say, I sit and giggle when I get <laughs> something like that. I sit and giggle, you know. It's just, it's fun. It's amazing. I, and uh, I'm looking at your, uh, at your aircraft pictures, especially. Uh, kind of show what I'm about to say, but your processing is. You've kind of got one toe in the surreal on it. Yeah, but it's not uh, so overblown like a point-and-click Instagram filter. Well, it's well, really some some of really them good. are. Sometimes they are. Uh, I tried to uh, do some faux HDR on some, and I don't like it. Uh, so 
if I make an if I make an HDR image, which usually requires anywhere from a three to nine images, I usually just pick one out and develop it. Okay. I, I shoot, you know, because I don't like what HDR the compiling does for it. Uh, the only thing I like to use multiple images on is when I focus stack. Now, focus stacking, for people that don't understand it, is that I shoot, or some photographers, they shoot so wide or so close to an image that they can only get a milli, mm -hmm. a milli uh, inch of the image in focus. But if you make 50 images of the same image, you can change the focus on every shot and then merge them together and come out with a right. completed image. That's fun, but it's time consuming. It's time and data and processing. Yeah. yeah. Let, let me ask you, okay, I'm going to ask you for a tip because <laughs> this is where I am. Um, okay. What, I'll do a, uh, let's try this. I'll tell you how I do it and ask how you do it. For instance, I did a session with model, with a couple of models. Okay. And I tried, I had pictures in my head that m didn't come out because of whatever reason. It just, it didn't, it looked awkward. It didn't look complete or whatever. And I, I shot the entire session and I put it away and, and, and I came back to it later. I just let it soak for a long time and I sort of forgot about it. I guess I and I and I forgot what I was trying to do. So when I looked at it again, it was almost like looking at somebody else's work. Oh, and then is, is that uh, how do you feel about that? Is that how you? I, oh, how you I do, do that all the time. Okay, I go back and I'll uh, find an image that I shot three or four years ago, and say, "Wow, where has that been?" Okay, good. you know, uh, you learn. I don't care who you are. I don't care how proficient you are at uh, post-processing. You learn every time you do it. You know, uh, you go through different styles. Uh, I do it all the time. I'll see an image. I want to redo that image. You know, uh, I shoot raw. I only shoot yeah, raw. That's what I do. I don't shoot. I don't shoot JPEG because I want the capability of, you know, man manipulating all of the image yeah uh, the colors in particular because you get the greatest dynamic range when you shoot raw but i'll you know and i use photoshop and lightroom all the time and then every once in a while i'll jump in to say luminar mm -hmm. and luminar does some pretty neat does one or two things real neat and i'll say well, that would look good on this image so i'll go find the image and bring it up and play with it uh, I use uh, some in uh, on one and I just I've got all the software I, yeah yeah you know I'm, I'm a junkie I can't help it but the best editing software on the planet is Photoshop I don't we all want to get away from it for whatever reason. We all want to leave it behind for whatever reason. We all want a magic pill someplace for whatever reason. But when push comes to shove and the cutting, as you say, in Berdizo, yeah, uh, Photoshop and Lightroom, magic. You, you, yeah, the reason... The reason I think people want to get away from it, and the reason I did not go to it, was the subscription aspect of it that a lot of services are going to. I use Affinity, which is yeah. nothing but yeah. a Photoshop I clone. Own all three of them. Yeah, all of yeah. I, yeah. Affinity is just is the same thing, and it and it. It's, you know, they it's, they all do some of the same thing, but when I get stuck on something, there's yeah. nothing that I can get out of. Like, and I tell you what makes Photoshop so powerful selections mm -hmm. you can make selections in photoshop like no other program you know i can select anything i can do it through color i can do it through uh 
the pen tool. I can do it any number of ways. And they just recently had an upgrade that's even getting more intelligent. You know, they're oh, yeah, uh, yeah. You know, they're uh, they're they're the king. They're the boss. That's, you know, that's the amazing thing about the, the whole technology of it. Uh, is I, I I have two options now. I can bring uh, my expensive DSLR and all the crap, or my phone that shoots. <laughs> you know, it's just, amazing, just isn't it? just remarkably depending on what I'm going to do. But I I wanted to ask you a question while we're on that topic. Coming from black and white uh, film era, processing your own. And then I'm assuming you did what everybody else did when you moved into color and things. You just, you shopped it out, uh, mailed it or took it to Walgreens or whatever. When you shoot now, do you shoot uh, with your processing in mind? No. That's no thing. No, I'm trying to capture an image. Okay. I have something in my mind for that particular shot. It intrigues me. It fascinates me. It's beautiful. Uh, or quirky. Uh, it's pleasing. And mm-hmm. I just want that image. If I can make that image better, I will. But I try to capture the image I want. Mm-hmm. I don't say, well, just shoot and go and just get see if you get lucky. Sometimes you get lucky. Everybody gets lucky. Yeah. But uh, I try to plan what I'm going to shoot. For instance, I like water drop photography. Now, I want to tell you what. That's the hardest thing I do. <laughs> yeah. Know, it really is. I can't imagine. You're trying to time a drop going into making a splash that's pretty, you know. Uh, and that's hard. That's really hard. I've tried it any number of ways. I take little rocks and I'll drop them, you know, one after another, just dropping them in in the water, see how how it splashes. If I can capture the splash, um, I like smoke photography. That's really intriguing. I, I have thought about that. I've yeah. got a I've got a smoke machine, and uh, I've made quite a few images of. So I've, one of the coolest images I made was uh, a porcelain dog surrounded with smoke. It looks surreal. Oh, cool. Yeah. It, uh, you know, uh, I buy, uh, I'll go to uh, Michael's or one of those places, and I'll buy little toy cars. And uh, I'll shoot them doing different things. I'll even drop them in the water. You know, it's, it's fun. I have uh, my friend uh, James Storms, who's on this podcast a lot, he gave me a it's a little hot wheels track kit this is right when i got out of the hospital uh it's a hot wheels track kit and a polaroid cube camera yeah and distills oh it's remarkably good 1080 and i tried to use it for another where you can hack them and use them as a light meter and that didn't work so it's back the way it was yeah but anyway then a hot wheels chassis that it fits on yeah so you can shoot it through this oh yeah And, and i have so many ideas and uh my friend uh, Mike Montalvo and I kind of talked about it at one time about doing stop action. Yeah, and, and I want to—I just want to play with some stuff like that. That's, well, that's all fascinating. This is stuff that uh, I learned to do uh, because I couldn't travel anymore. Yeah. I can't travel, so I had to find out some things that I could shoot, entertain myself. I still want to shoot every day. I don't shoot as much as I used to shoot because I'm learning to do video now, and that is a horse for another color. Yes, sir. Uh, you not video is uh, has its own language, like still photography has its own language. Video has its own language. Audio has its own language. I'm still trying to learn what gain and all that means. I don't. I don't have a clue. I can help you with all that. That, that <laughs> part I know. <laughs> well, I, I don't know. I don't know it at all, and it's driving me crazy. Yeah, yeah. And you'd be surprised how many, how few people really do. They they don't know. It's amazing how many uh, 
working musicians don't know. Yeah, and, oh, it's a, and, yeah. and and that's uh, I I've I have been very fortunate to have a lot of really squared away audio engineer folk in my life. Mm-hmm. Uh, you you know Ken Morgan, he's crossed yeah. your Ken Morgan. Uh, Tim Kreitz has helped yeah. me immensely, uh, and then Rick Morgan, no relation. He's a guitar yeah. player I worked with. All those guys speak the language and have helped me, and and it's just another thing. I want to ask you this. Um, one of the reasons – you're talking about experimenting with different uh, processing software and yeah. things. I stick to – I stick to one. Now I'm not experimenting as much as you are. I, I, oh, I, play I all the you time, know, man. but but I don't. Uh, I do, but not extensively. One of the problems I have now, I'm, of course, I'm into audio and I'm into astrophotography and I'm into this little hobby. Uh, so I do some video and all of this stuff. Uh, and and I have a uh, uh, infrared rifle sight wow. that that's like wow that's like running a space shuttle. I feel like my brain is full. My drive is full. How do you keep track or or do you just use it all enough each application to stay on top of it or do you have cheat sheets? How, how do you how do you pull it off? For a normal image, I have a routine. Uh and the routine doesn't change for any image unless it's too dark or too light. Generally my exposure is spot on. Mm-hmm. I, when I say exposure, I'm talking about the lightness. Right. Of the pitch. That's usually about the best. What I what I alter is I uh, I reduce my highlights. Mm-hmm. That's the whiteness, the white pixels you have in your image, and I open up my shadows. I do extremes. I I go in opposite right. directions. Okay, and then in say Adobe Camera Raw or Lightroom. The same one. Uh, I take my sharpness and I move it to ninety-five to hundred. So you go up. I go up to ninety-five or hundred. Okay, okay. So I do the op. Well, go ahead. I'll, I'll, okay. I'll talk. Well, what you have to be careful of when you do that, because I, the new cameras with the ISO capabilities that they have, you can, you can induce noise real easy. Mm-hmm. So when Depending on what my ISO is, I'll reduce the noise level. Oh, okay, I understand. Okay. understand. After I sharpen, after I sharpen, not before I sharpen, but after I sharpen, and uh, I put a little vignette on mm-hmm. it. I remove the chromatic aberrations. I've never seen a chromatic aberration except uh, doing video, mm-hmm. uh, but I still uh, adjust it for the lens that I'm using with the camera. And uh, I reduce uh, the chromatic aberration. Then I save a large JPEG image. My image, I don't save a small image. I don't create a small image. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I don't either. You know, I, I, I that's lit- You can always make a large image smaller, but you can't make a small image larger. Right. You know, that's because of pixels. And, uh, I, I either save off in uh, JPEG or uh, PNG. Some people save off as TIFF images. You'll run out of space one day. Yeah. You know, and I, I, I've got eight or nine hard drives. That, well, and, and unless you're displaying it like on your own web page or like a not not a Facebook page, but an actual your own URL and your own thing, nobody's going to let you post yeah. that much. That oh, much I have never had trouble. Yeah. I have had trouble trying to email that large. Yeah, yeah, the big ones. You yeah. know, but uh, you can get around that by putting them in Messenger mm-hmm. on Facebook. You can. I just never had trouble with Messenger. Yeah, I, where I have with email, and you can Dropbox. I do. Uh, yeah, I use Dropbox you a use lot. Do, yeah. Well, Dropbox is pretty awesome. Yeah, I've got two accounts, and one of them's good, and one of them's not so good, and. Uh, that had to do with me buying a new computer. Yeah. So, yeah, we, uh, uh, my buddy Jim, uh, the same guy I was talking about, we, he, he showed up with a bunch of parts and we put together a monster of a computer that yeah. has, well, you has have, really, yeah. You've you, got to have, uh, you've got to, you've you got need, to have computing power. I don't have anything that has less than 32 gigabytes of RAM. 
And that's mm-hmm. a, you know, and of course, what you do, you want a, a real good uh, graphics card. Oh yeah, yeah. This uh, this takes a lot of <laughs> it's a, a lot of storage yeah. and a lot of uh, so, a, a lot of a lot of uh, crunch power, and yeah. then transfer yeah. because you don't have to upload it. And well, people all that. people they tell people they can get by with eight uh, gigabytes of RAM. I'm saying, yeah, okay. You know, if you if you do one or two images a year, you'd be fine. Yeah, if that's all you do is you know, that little bit. But, yeah, uh, that that's the most important thing to me in uh, in computing is a RAM. Mm-hmm. I've got to have plenty. Of, well, I've got to have space, but I do that with external hard drives. I, I don't save my pictures on my hard drive. I save everything to either Dropbox, one of my cloud servers. I've got. Two or three cloud services too. I ought to be ashamed of myself for I, all that I've got. But I, I'm having I I, I <laughs> had this again bringing up Jim. I had this conversation this morning uh, on online. Uh, I I have I'm having this existential crisis with how to set up all my stuff that I have. I have this computer network with that one. I've got it all on a mesh network. And uh, I'm, I have this going to this hard drive, and then I have this one backing up to this one, yeah. and, I'll, and I really should just stick it all on the cloud, but I'm still, no, I, it all just, or, or Dropbox or something, I'm, it's just. I uh, have everything on Dropbox, I have everything in the cloud, and I have everything on several hard drives. Yeah. Because I have, in the past, I have had hard drives Right. Yeah, I, and I'm I'm terrified and of losing then data. You're talking about several thousand dollars to recover, and I think they're my honest opinion. I think they're crooks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I've got I have them backed up to so, each other, but so I back up my backups. Yeah, you know, uh, and I don't worry about my programs. You can always reinstall programs, but you can't reinstall. Lost file. Yeah, your stuff, you, you can't go take that picture again. No. That's gone forever. Oh. That is gone. I have just thousands. Of, when I spent over a month in the hospital, so I thought I'd take the opportunity and uh, organize my files. Better organize my files. And my files are fairly organized. So, and that's the difficult thing. So I put lions, tigers, monkeys yeah. you know <laughs> i see and I, I i try i can't figure out how to do mine i've done them by geographic location i've done them by time i've done i, I just it's still fresh enough in my head <clears throat> if you want to see the picture i took of uh i don't know the coffee plantation in yeah. uh colima i can go find it yeah you know eventually i'll, yeah. I'll run across it and then uh i I just started. Uh, I started doing what I call them phone dumps. Yeah. Every once in a while, I'll just take my phone, dump it into a directory, and then back it up because, yeah. you know, if I took it on my phone, it may be a while, but I'll find it. Yeah. yeah <laughs> so, I, I understand. I want to ask you. Uh, this is. I was trying to think of interesting stuff to ask you. Uh, I don't follow a, a whole lot of of pro photographers because there's just so much stuff out there. But there are a few, Sasha Leindecker and a, and a few others, they're doing work. Uh, what's fascinating to me right now, what really catches my eye, are the people who are doing very uh, simplistic setups. Single yeah. lights, uh, good cameras, you know, obviously medium format and stuff like that. And that's sort of what I try to do because, first of all, it's cheap. Uh, if you do it right, it's easy compared to having a studio. Oh, I yeah. Mean, uh, you know, and, and I, my background, my only training was photojournalism and then portrait photography. Yeah. So, you know, we're talking a, a triple light or a butterfly or something crazy like that that you have to set up. Whereas you can drag one, uh, like a, a spot or a, a softbox or something like that. Yeah. How, how's, where are you on that? What do you think is, oh, is appealing right now? Uh, I love lighting. Lighting is. Lighting helps you create shadows. Mm -hmm. And oddly enough, that's what you're really after. You want that type of shadow that is uh, uh, attractive and that is interesting because it's like the Renaissance. The Renaissance was uh, created uh, 
by artists who created shadows. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, three dimensional. It gives it dimension. Lighting is the same way. Lighting, you've got to have a key light. You know, you may want to have a side light, and you want to have a hair light, a backlight. Mm-hmm. You know, you maybe want something lighting the background only. Uh, there's this. It's fun to play with. I have more lights than brains. You know, <laughs> I've got. I've got. Uh, I'm. Ter- it's, I, I've got uh, four pro photos. You know, and I've never used but three of them at one time. Uh, I've got all kinds of Godox. I've got the new Godox round head that I'm fascinated with. I use uh, lighting is, I use lights outdoors. Mm-hmm. Okay. L- light gets rid of sunlight. Oddly enough, uh, people don't understand that. What are you, why are you using it? There's plenty of light out here. Well, I'm getting rid of the shadows. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm getting rid of the brightness of the sun. You know, uh, I'm helping create a shadow on this side of the face or, you know, wh- whatever your purpose is is in doing what you're doing. You can light with one light real easy. Uh, paid photographers do that all the time because they'll stick it way up on a pole and shoot it directly at you or they'll, you know, if they have you inside a room, they'll shoot it against the wall mm-hmm. and they're really creating a large softbox. Um, lighting is a challenge and fun. The best person I know at lighting really was a photographer here in Midland at one time, and he is Tony Corbell. Mm-hmm. Uh, he, he worked here in Midland as a photographer. Uh, he started off with uh, uh, Henderson, I think, and then he had a place in Delwood Mall. I remember him, yeah. Okay, and now he's world famous. Yep. And he's world famous for lighting problems. He says he's a problem solver when it comes to lighting, and I get, I get a kick at him. There's a... Uh, He's excellent with uh, with lighting. Uh, you know, with digital, like you said. And uh, I know Tony, by the way. Oh, cool, cool. I've met him, but I never, yeah. I, this is way, yeah, way I've, I've been with way, him way several times. Then. Here in Joel Grimes. Yeah. Yeah. I remember Joel Grimes. I've been with him several times. Of course, we did a lot with Sam Hollis, too, back, Yeah, you know, with the high school I've been lucky enough guys. to meet many of these people, including Moose Peterson and, mm-hmm. You know, they don't remember me because I was that little old man over there, you know, but. Yeah. Uh, yeah, those were the days. Corbell liked my work. He highlighted some of my work for me. Uh, I like him. There, there, there's so many good photographers. And like I say, if you learn the language, you can be just as good as them. Mm-hmm. It's just not a problem. Once you understand what Aperture does, what shutter speed does, and what ISO does, and you learn what to call them, you learn where they are on your camera, and uh, the, you throw out the exposure triangle out the window because there's no such thing as a triangle in photography. That, that's a misnomer, and I, I think it's terrible. And if you'll when you you have to learn what stops are now aperture has their own stops mm-hmm. so to speed has its own stops and iso has its own stops and somewhere in here they, they're balanced the sunny 16 rule is a good place to start learning and that's to say if you set your camera and manual at f16 uh, that's the aperture. That's the size of the hole in in your camera. Uh, a shutter speed of uh, one one hundredth of a second, and your ISO at one one hundredth of a second on a sunny, bright day outside. That ought to be proper exposure. Mm-hmm. It could be it's one two hundredth of a second or uh, ISO two hundred and sixteen, but it's somewhere in there. And it it means if you adjust one a stop. You have to adjust the other one, a stop, okay? You always have to adjust to keep the exposure balanced. And that's some, 
something that they really ought to teach is exposure balancing. Mm -hmm. You know, and it to me it started with this under sixteen rule. It dawned on me if I had a scale going up and down instead of a triangle. Triangle just totally messed my mind up. That wow, if this is if my if my F stop is sixteen, my S ISO is one hundred. My shutter speed is one one hundredth of a second, and I want to have a blurry background, and I go to f two point eight. How many stops is that? Right. Okay. And then what do I have to do over here to make these adjustments? And if you learn that, you've got photography. Mm -hmm. I, I agree. Yeah. You know? I, I was forced to learn that uh, with my first camera, the X370 in film, oh, yeah. because you know, obviously ISO is fixed in the film days, but you, you had a zone. Yeah. Well, that you it was ASA. By. Yeah. ASA. But you, you had the yeah, zone that yeah. you would, you would, you're kind of forced to do that. And digital and DSLR, I've had to force myself to think about that ISO and really get a grip on well, that's it. ASA. I, I still don't have it. Yeah. Well, it's just ASA, and uh, what with the new cameras out today, uh, I'll say my new cameras, uh, I'm using uh, a Nikon Z6, Nikon Z7, and oddly enough, the cheapest camera, I think, not DSL or mirrorless that Nikon makes is a Z50. Okay. It's okay. Got, yeah. Okay. And... I bought mine as kind of a joke. It turned out it's it's no joke. Yeah. <laughs> it's a serious camera. You know, but the ISO I can run to 6400 mm -hmm. or to 10,000. First shots I made with the Z6 was at ISO 10,000 inside of a garage. There was no noise. And I just I was amazing. Flabber <laughs> well, yeah. So what I do now with those cameras because I know them so well is I put the ISO on auto, okay? That way, I adjust my shutter speed and, mm -hmm. uh, and my aperture where I want it, and the ISO helps make up the difference in keeping a proper balance. And that's beautiful. Yeah. That's fun. The, the 5100 features that way pretty well because especially when you're uh, – Oh, you're doing outside. You're kind of you're kind of running and gunning. You don't, what you know, and you just push the ISO to what limit you yeah, can. And uh, you know, my biggest problem is I've as I've gotten older is going from shooting bare eyed. You know, I have good distance vision to looking down in classes. And of course, you know, it's magic. It's summer and it's hot. And one, I was I was knee deep in water, taking pictures, and those good auto settings. Man, that just that makes your day because you can you, you can roll the thumb wheel to your sure you whatever you're working with your shutter sure. speed or your aperture that's amazing that's fun yeah yeah it's a you know blast. If, if, if i think people should shoot in a manner that's fun mm -hmm. for them what i really think is that people ought to make as many images as they can because then they'll say well how do i do this how do i do that you know if i had done this it would have been a little better had I not frozen the bicycle wheels and see where I see the spokes like it's standing still, that would have been better if they had showed a little motion. What motion. do I have to do to do yeah. that? You know, a prop, for instance, if you'll notice my my prop, my plane the shots, uh -huh. the props are never frozen. You've got to find the final, the, the fine balance in there to show motion in the props. Mm-hmm. You know that they're going around and around because they're if you don't if you freeze them anybody can freeze them you can shoot high enough but then a jet on the other hand you've got to shoot at one two thousandth of a second or you'll never get it <laughs> you won't get a picture of a jet <laughs> you know you get the good picture of the you know the ta coming out of the tailpipe yeah yeah well that's um, that's amazing and Again, digital man. I just, just thinking back to film days when you had to wait. And oh, when you, God, that was horrible. I, I've had. Uh, I'll tell you what I've been working on lately, which is not, uh, not as interesting as anything you're doing. But uh, shooting, shooting black and whites 
That's fun. Digital and processing. Because you remember when, when we did black and white, you had the options of the, the color filters on the camera and then the red filter on the enlarger. And uh, I remember uh, our, our project in learning camera filters was a an example of real estate photography yeah. where you wanted to tone down the stop sign in front of the house or, yeah, or, or whatever. You put know, a neutral the, density the, Yeah, the it. telephone poles or yeah, yeah. You'd, anyway. Uh, and then uh, what you can do with the, the red, red filters on the enlarger. And doing that in the black and white features of Affinity or Photoshop, and especially when you're shooting with that in mind, uh, the stuff you can come out with and then aging it, you know, putting in putting in noise, putting in scratches, uh, making it look like the old old film grain and, and yeah. all that. That's that's kind of fun. I have a friend that. in Fulton, uh, Maria Nesbitt, who is a professional photographer and a retired school teacher, uh, who is a master at the filters mm-hmm. for cameras. She shoots just some incredible images of the water and the birds and so forth with filters and she uses you know a pretty extensive system she's tried to get me into it i have filters i use them sometimes but i like because i like to shoot dark i usually underexpose a lot of my images you won't find too many of my images overexposed i don't like overexposed Mm -hmm. images uh they say you know uh uh, exposed to the right, I exposed to the left mm-hmm. because I, that's I, what I like. Well, and and doing raw, it's it's easier when you have not enough and not too much. It, yeah. it, it well, just tends to. Yeah, correct I can better. always lighten them up if I if I got them too dark. But, but the correction seems to go better larger than darker, mm-hmm. right? Well, uh, brighter than darker. The, do you think they they? they tend to say that but they, they want you exposed to the right where you're not blowing out the whites uh and i don't i i don't worry about i don't blow anything out mm-hmm. uh, i have uh what let me tell you what digital does when i was first learning digital i spent probably 30 minutes shooting a flower in a pot and uh when i went to develop my SD card, all I had was black images. <laughs> I said, oh, my God, what did I do? I spent all this time. Uh, so I took my uh, exposure slider and moved it totally to the right, about eight, six or eight stops. I can't remember which. And it was the most beautiful red flower I've ever seen. Yep. That that was just, that's what made me start exposing everything more to the left than to the right, and uh, it's just style. It's personal preference. You know, I don't really have to shoot to please anyone but me. And if I'm successful, I'm happy. If I'm not successful, I won't show it to you. <laughs> you know, I'll ditch it. I'll get rid of it. That's that's everything. You if, you, if you're doing it, yeah, if you're doing it for you, if you're doing it for yeah, well, I am and, a loved you know, one. Or, yeah. uh, when someone likes one of my images enough to ask for it, I'm, I'm usually pleased to make that happen mm-hmm. somehow because I like the fact that they like my work. You know, uh, there's, a, there's a lady who copies just about every image I do. And she's not selling them. She says she puts them on her laptop or notepad, and she looks at them. Mm-hmm. Well, that pleases me, and I'm glad she likes them. You know, I'm glad she does that. Uh, it doesn't hurt my feelings, and I'm not going to get my rear in the air that that's a copyrighted image. It is copyrighted, but she's not selling it to anybody. I don't really care. You know, then on the other hand, I'll have, uh, I've had people steal an image for commercial purposes. And then sell it, yeah. yeah. And uh, I've caught them. People, I've, you know, I've got pretty close to 5,000 friends, and people get around. Yeah. And if they see, if they see one of my images someplace, they, they'll tell me. And, uh, 
if you're looking at me, chances are they're looking at you. And uh, I've had I've asked them to pull it down and you know not use it, and really because they didn't ask me, you know that it makes you mad when people just take something, just grab it, yeah. And that's uh, I, I've I've done you know shared images or whatever on Facebook and uh, one out of ten. 20, 30 times, somebody will get upset about it. I'm like, well, you know, if you publish something cool, people are going to share it. And then <laughs> well, I, 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 did like a, I did a project once uh, when, when I was a portrait photographer. Somebody asked me to do a, a pro job for free. You know, would you do yeah. this for, 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 well, I could say it, it was a little league you team. You said a lot. <laughs> yeah, and I said, sure, no problem. And I went out and I shot it with, with my gear. And... Uh, Gave him the film, and it was good. It wasn't anything spectacular. You know, it was just it was these pictures of kids, and they were in focus, and the color was good, and everything else. And uh, a couple of months later, the lady came back and was uh, she worked the same place as me, and she was kind of chewing me out because they hired a pro, and look how much better their pictures are. And I said, and I, and I held him up, and I said, "This is a college student with his own crap that did it as a favor." And this is a person with 10 times the money and experience that gets paid for it. Don't, you know, that's it. And, and so at that point, uh, I turned down to do, no, I'm not going to shoot your wedding. No, I'm not going to shoot no, <laughs> this. No, no, I'm not going to shoot that. If you like my picture, just like you said, you my, can have them. Or, yeah, my you know. hat goes off to wedding photographers. Oh, yeah. I don't, I don't see how they do it. And uh, I couldn't. But the hardest... Uh, job I've ever heard of or ever even attempted to do was now I lay me down to sleep and that's a group of photographers headed by a, a fellow out of uh, Denver who works with an organization throughout the United States on shooting babies on the deathbed yeah and uh, in order to become a photographer, for now I lay me down to sleep, you have to go through a course. You, they just don't turn you loose to let you be a photographer now, for now I lay me down to sleep. So I said, well, I can do that. You know, I'll take the course. Well, you know, I, I was in tears. Yeah. And so I, I uh, called the guy and said, I can't do it. I said, because I, I'll never stop blubbering yeah long enough to make the images you know that's i've that's too hard i've taken pictures of a lot of dead babies in my career and well, that's you know not, what i mean yeah I, I couldn't do that that's why uh every time the uh all the memes and the cartoons and the jokes about sleeping with a baby come mm -hmm. around you know mm -hmm. i'll tell them man i've taken a lot of pictures of little dead gray babies because of co-sleeping yeah, yeah i, I can't just, do it I, I i wanted to do something benevolent yeah and uh I, it was too difficult i found I'm, I'm pointing to my office that you can't see okay. <laughs> it's just, uh i found uh it's probably six or eight rolls of 35 that i took uh during the del rio floods and they're just negatives uh, i shot them all to to have them printed in negatives and i'm just about ready to look at those again I oh, think some of, them are, some of them are pretty rough, but no, no, but uh, uh, I think it's, I think it's, I don't, uh, I don't think those are rough at all. And because you're experimenting, you're learning something every time you do it. Uh, I think the only thing wrong with uh, photographers is that they don't shoot enough. Yeah. That's you know, true. uh, I had, uh, I, I went to the store I don't remember which one. Oh, Walmart. And I bought a bubble machine. Yeah. I, I, this is crazy as the Dickens. And uh, I started shooting bubbles. And then a little kid was next door. And uh, I said, hey. I asked mother. I said, can I, can I put this bubble machine over here and shoot your kid with the bubble machine? She looked at me like I was crazy and said, well, okay. 
And they, I put, I said, I want him to stand here, and I'm going to put the bubble machine here, and I'm going to turn it on and let it go. Right? And this one really goes with a lot of bubbles. That's cool. And that kid was so delighted that he gave me every expression in the world shooting him, and it was fun, you know? So that's the kind of thing I like. I, I, I like anything different. I like anything that will put a smile on someone's face or on my face. That is what makes a successful shot. Mm -hmm. Now, speaking about good shots, photographers only make a handful of good shots every year. Only maybe four or five yeah. that are really good shots. And that's, uh, that's it, the pros. You know, uh, they make good images, but they don't make really good images that often. Make a successful image, but that, not a, that, yeah. You know, it's like the, the guy that shot the Afghan woman. My yeah. God. You know, what an image, you know. The guy that shot uh, Ernest Hemingway, you know, wow. Yeah, Picasso in his studio. That yeah. was a big one. You know, yeah. just, wow, you know. Now, just they, they're simple shots, but they capture the moment. I've got one of a um, bar manager in uh, Little Italy in New York. That This is a guy that looks like the Don himself, and he's just hawking people out on the street to come into his restaurant and eat, yeah. you know. And he is it's amazing, you know. It's just there's uh, one one of my buddies did one. It was a uh, I, I think it was it was a high school photojournalism project, or it may have been a uh, high school newspaper story. There used to be a bunch of old men that played chess every morning at Washington Park, yeah. and he got some shots of those guys with the old knurled hands and the wrinkled faces and all, with the good solid morning morning light under the shade of those trees and i hope you can find them I, yeah. we'd talked about them but i'm not sure where they were but things like that and that that's that that snapshot moment in time there's uh there's one uh, i was telling my wife about this just the other day there's a hotel in galveston that i had a, a work conference i had to go to every couple of years it was always there there's a group of elderly ladies that meet i think Every morning, it's not always the same ladies, but in this, it's like in men this, having coffee, yeah, just, they're playing mahjong. There's these four ladies in there, and it's never, never, never the same group, but they're there in the morning during the breakfast crowd, drinking coffee or sipping tea and playing mahjong, and they do that up until about noon, and they they leave. And uh, I was sitting there looking at them, and they're very, you know, they're well dressed. They're, you know, obviously retirement age you know you know older older ladies and i was just sitting there looking at the light going and this is fantastic Th that's that's something that needs to be yeah. needs to be shot yeah one day because and and the uh especially at this phase in my life looking back the things that i have photographed especially in high school when you're not really thinking about it yeah. they're not the things i should have photographed i should have photographed the everyday things you know I, I wish I had one of my grandmother doing dishes, yeah. looking out the window with her binoculars yeah. sitting there, yeah. waiting for her airplanes to fly over. Yeah. Uh, I, I wish, uh, you know, I had one of of, of uh, me or my uncle Bill, a better shot of him than I did. You know, the people in my life that were really influential. That that speaks to capturing that moment in yeah. time. You yeah. know, and. Uh, I think that's what I like most about photography for me is that when I catch a bloom on a flower, that's only for a moment in time. Mm -hmm. There's a, a flower at the, the International Water Lily exhibit in San Angelo. Uh, it's a lily pad, and when it has a bloom, it only blooms once a year yeah. for 24 hours. Wow. And I just go, I've, I've been able to photograph it a couple of times, and I go, wow, you know. 
you don't know this, but I saw this, and I captured this, and it only happens once a year for 24 hours. You know, then it dies. You know, how long did you have to stalk that plant? Oh, I, <laughs> I stop. It's a matter of luck. That's part of what photography is. Yeah, that's for sure. In some cases, it, you know, it's like I, I told you about the Afghan woman. That was lucky photographer. Mm -hmm. He made millions of dollars off of it, but he was a lucky photographer. The guy that uh, shot the fella at Tenement Square. Mm -hmm. They got run over by the tank. That's, you know, that's a moment. The guy, that, you know, those are moments in time that someone was there to capture. Yep. And, uh, you know, you talk about the iPhone taking a good picture. I've got uh, an 11X, mm -hmm. okay, Pro, and it takes really good pictures. Now, I've got an image in my portfolio on the net that I took with an iPhone and I've never told anybody that yep. I took it with an iPhone, but it was at the Museum of Natural History in New York. And I just happened to snap this image and went, wow, you know, it just, it was perfect. And it was just, I just happened to have my iPhone there and, and I took it. And uh, I've never told anybody. They're true confessions. Yeah, and and that's yeah. I one of the best uh, in, in high school, you know, Lee High School when I went. One of the best pictures that I saw taken of, of uh, an action shot, a football shot. Uh, my buddy took it. He was doing something. He he was like talking to a girl or something. He wasn't paying attention. You know, photographer. And the crowd cheered, and he took off running, and there was some dramatic play of yeah. interception or whatever. And we used the uh, Yashica, uh, the twin lens. Yeah. And he just held it up and just clicked the camera. Yeah. He's like, well, I'm in trouble. Click. Yeah. And it's one of the most front-page-worthy photos ever. To total luck. Yeah. You know, just, well, just complete, well, you've got complete to, luck. You've got if you put yourself or if you show up yeah and put yourself in position to have that look uh one of the uh, better photographers in the world is an icon ambassador from midland texas and that's andrew hancock oh okay yeah he's yeah. from midland i had no idea he was from midland oh yes yes i play used that, to play golf with his grandfather that explains why the name comes up so much around here i, I didn't a, know he, i'd oh, seen he, it but uh, he's he's well, does all the texas a and m does notre dame wow uh he just moved back to texas from uh indianapolis his father lives here in midland uh He's a he's a tremendous photographer. That's uh, but he's an ambassador for Nikon, which means he gets to try out all the new gear. How cool is that? Oh, it oh man, I, I need an endorsement in something. Yeah, I understand. <laughs> well, there you can make your own endorsements. Yeah. If I wanted to, if I wanted to be the type of photographer that had endorsements i could be but i don't want to be that busy. i don't want to work that hard i don't want to work yeah. that hard i'm 77 years old i don't want to work that hard i want to have fun mm -hmm. i want to have pleasure i will help anybody that needs help i'll be glad to help them i don't you can't buy me someone asked me to shoot a wedding i told them i'd do it for forty thousand dollars yeah <laughs> you know that yeah. They don't well, know I'd hire someone to do it. That's the point of, kind of the point of this podcast is, is it's okay to be an amateur and to stay an amateur. You know, uh, professional astronomy is extraordinarily boring. It, well, it really and truly is. Amateur astronomy is a lot of fun because we do it when we want to. Uh, you know, we have good food and good beer and we go to bed when we want. And if we don't get the shot, we don't have to pay any extra money on the grant. Well, <laughs> now... You don't have to chase grants right. like they do. Right. 
uh, most professional photography starve. Mm-hmm. They, you know, they, they're hungry. Uh, I see them every day. I refer them all the time. They're hungry. They they they, they shoot for a pittance yep. of what the value is. Uh, I won't. I tell people that ask me to do a shoot that my half day rate is two thousand dollars. A lot of people don't like to talk about money. I will. But my half-day rate is $2,000 if they want me bad enough. Mm-hmm. And luckily enough, they don't. You know, they go, geez, that's high. I said, well, it's worth what I'm worth. You know, you're not going to underpay me to do what I do. I've got probably more than $100,000 tied up in photography gear. And you want to pay me $50 to make a shot of that kind of investment? That doesn't make sense to me. Yeah. And I'm sure it doesn't to you either. No, I, I, I'm equating that to music because everybody wants you to play something for free. For free. And I'll say, okay, well, first of all, we've got to move a, about the equivalent of a one-bedroom apartment in gear. Uh, yeah. Show up with, I, I don't you know, everybody's got a lot of money tied up in their gear, but then yeah, then well, you have do. to do that. Um, and half the time they go, you know, but yeah, it's, you know, the hobby you guys are, are having fun. Well, we look like we're having fun. You're working. Because that's what you're paying me to yeah, do. You're working. I'm working and I might have a headache and my wife is mad that I'm supposed to be having dinner with her or whatever, whatever is going on. It's, I was, it's a job. I've been lucky enough to shoot the uh, Texas KGB band, mm-hmm. uh, Kelly Green. Yeah. And, they worked their tails off. Yeah, it's work. You know, and uh, I enjoyed shooting them. She uh, she sounds like Jan- Janis Joplin. Mm-hmm. Just yeah, she's gravelly. Great. Yeah, yeah, just wow. I go, that's crazy. Yeah, you know, that's fun. And uh, there's a if I if I could have my choice of what to shoot today, there is a singer I would shoot. And I would, I would almost pay to shoot her, <laughs> and that's uh, Angelina Jordan. Oh yeah, yeah. That girl has she's thirteen years old. It's from Holland, and she has a voice that I, th- I think she's going to become one of the best singers in the world. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she's all over the place. Oh, she, she's she's that the, good. I've circles. listened to everything she's done, and I I watch her a lot on YouTube. But she, she is just tremendous. And she won Norway's Got Talent at the age of seven years old. Yep. You know. That, that's, there's so much going on over uh, there. It's, it's hard to realize there are people like that. We're about to out-talk our batteries. Uh, by the way, when I was going through all this, is today your birthday? Yes. Happy birthday, sir. Well, thank you. And thank you for coming in on your birthday. Well, I was, thank you for having me. I was starting to, I was getting ready to save images and what I was going to talk about, and I see all oh, your happy birthday. Well, fantastic, man. Well, I hope you, you have a great birthday. You going to, you do anything special? No, just live. <laughs> that's, that's me. Just yeah. having another birthday is a gift. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's a gift. <laughs> That's a gift. Well, cool. Well, thank uh, you very much for having me. Thank you. I appreciate you coming in, and we'll have you in again. I'd love to get you and uh, maybe John Capadonna and maybe my buddy Mikey yeah. in here, he and I'll talk. From, uh, what, didn't he go to Florida for a while? Uh, he did. Uh, he's 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 back. He's, he's back? back in town, I believe so. He yeah, was he's, yeah, he's just right over here behind me. Okay. Um, and now your your photos and all are pretty much hosted on your Facebook page, and your photos are public. Is that correct? Uh Pretty much on my Facebook page and my face David Pine Photography Facebook page. Okay, and on about in, that. David Pine Photography Instagram. Okay, good. We'll put them on there. Fantastic. Well, thank you, sir. And we'll do this again. Thank I'm, you so I'm very much. much and there's a lot to learn from you. And and uh, in fact, I'm going to be when I process this video, I'll be making notes of stuff to try. Okay. Well, <laughs> I hope I hope it's good. And here's to you. Cheers, sir. Thank you very much. Enjoyed it. You bet.